Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a cheap and easy relay box for your project. If you're new here, welcome to my channel and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. So this kit here is the one that I built for my XJ project. It comes with everything you need minus the wire. One thing that I really like about this kit is it was very inexpensive and it came with everything you needed including fuses and relays. It's also watertight. There are silicone pieces back here to kind of help it be watertight as well as there's a cover. Keep all the water off your electronics. So this here is everything you're going to need. You're going to need to make sure you got a good pair of wire cutters and crimpers. This is an all-in-one pair that I picked up. You're going to need some wire. Now I'm running 14 gauge for my power and 18 gauge coming from my switches as well as the ground for the relay. And you're also going to need your relay kit. Now this kit I purchased on Amazon. If you want to check it out, there's a link in the description below. So this here is everything that's going to come in the kit. You've got your box with the cover. There's some of these silicone grommets to help keep the water out as well as some smaller ones. And you've got all your pins for your relays and all the pins for your fuses as well as some mounting hardware. Now when you order the kit, it gives the option to order it as a bundle with a bunch of relays and fuses. My first one I ordered that way. This one I didn't because I already had a huge stack of relays piling up that I'm going to go ahead and use. Something I realized I forgot to mention earlier, you are going to need a good pair of wire strippers. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure which pins do what function on your relay. That way you can know where to run your wires. Now on our relay here, this pin is our constant power in, so this is going to be the power coming from the fuse, which is going to be the top up here. The middle one is going to be our constant power out, so that's going to be the middle one right here. This one here is going to be our switched power out. So we're going to make sure that we line it up right here. And then to our left here is going to be our power from switch, and to our right is going to be our ground. So just as long as we remember all that, when you're wiring up, you shouldn't have any issues. So now that we know how our relay is going to wire up, we can start running some wires. So I'm going to focus on the power out first. I know I want at least a foot, so I'm going to go ahead and cut six lengths of a foot of my 14 gauge wire. Eh, that looks like a foot, right? So now we've got six links of power out, and we're also gonna need six links of power in. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those out too. So I've cut links for my fused power in, as well as my power out. Now for my switched power out, I am gonna be changing colors, just so that it'll make it easier down the road when I go to wire this thing in. So for that, I'm just gonna be using some old 14 gauge blue and white wire that I already got laying around. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my six links to that as well. So now that that's all cut, we're going to go ahead and start wiring. That way we don't get confused and we're going to cut some more wire later. So we're going to start with our power in diffuse. So go ahead and grab your wires that you're going to be running power in diffuse. And you're going to want to strip like a quarter inch off of one end. So now that we got those stripped, we're going to break into our pack of pins. Now, there's a lot in here. They're kind of easy to drop. So what I recommend doing is you got a beautiful bowl right here to pour all these in and start throwing. So what we're going to do is you want to make sure you kind of twist your wire up just to shore it up a little bit. And you're going to take your pin. So we're going to set our wire in like this. And right here, you want to fold those over on top and snug it up really nice and tight. And then do the same 
on those larger legs. Now that you're all snugged up nice and tight and you know it's not going anywhere, you want to make sure you give it a good tug and double check and make sure that we're crimped down really good. Once that's done, you want to repeat that process another five times. So now what you can do is go ahead and slide these in to your fuse locations. Now there's a little hole in the back of these and they will clip in to a spot in your relay box. So the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and strip all your power out wires and we're going to pin those next. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and open up our pins for the relay. They are different. We're going to pour them into our little cup here. Now on each of these wires, we're going to go ahead and crimp one of these on the same way. Once again, you just want to set your wire in there and these legs here will fold over on top of that. Make sure you crimp it down really tight as well as that there. You want to make sure to crimp it down really tight. Now if you mess one up, it's not the end of the world. You do get extras in the kit. Okay, so now that all that's set, we can go ahead and start pinning them in. Now remember our power out is center and our switched power is going to be at the bottom here. Now, just like the ones that go in the fuses, these go in one way where they clip in. Make sure you put them in the right way. Okay, now that all that's done, we're going to start on our ground wires and our wiring from our switches. So once again, we're going to need six links of cable from our switches as well as six links of cable that go to ground. Hmm, I don't know that one. Now you can go ahead and loop all your grounds together, but in my opinion it makes it easier to have six separate grounds, can run them all to a block, it makes things a whole lot easier. So I've got all my wires coming from switches. I've got, them, I've got the pins attached to them as well as my ground. So we're going to go ahead and insert them in here. Our power comes in from our left and our ground is on our right when we're looking at the bottom here like so. Let's go ahead and insert all those. Once again, you want to make sure that they clip in. Okay, now that all that's done, now's where it gets complicated. So what we're going to do is we're going to make jumper wires that go from our fuses and over to our relays. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cut out our jumper wires, but you're only going to pin the relay side first. And I'll show you why in just a minute. But we're going to go ahead and cut those, pin them, relay side only. So I know this just looks like a tangled mess, but I assure you it's not. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and break into our little silicone grommets, water keepers, whatever you want to call them. These little silicone pieces here. Now you're going to have some little round ones. These ones go to the fuse side. So we're going to go ahead and do six of those and the wire should just poke through. Alright, we're also going to break into the ones that go into the relay. Now these might take you a little bit of time. Just make sure that your wires line up the way that they're supposed to, the way that they poke through these. Go ahead and send them all home.
This is our middle. This is our switch. Go ahead and slide all that down. And make sure you put your constant power or your make sure you put your fuse power through last. And go ahead and slide this all the way down. get that wedged into place just like that. Now you want to repeat that on all the other ones. Now the reason why we wait to pin our jumper wires on the fuse side is this reason right here. So if you would have done that, you would not have been able to get those silicone pieces in. So now what we're going to do is slide the rest of our silicone pieces for our fuses onto our jumper wires. Make sure you know which way they're going because now they're going to kind of be going on backwards. That way when you pin it, it'll slide on the right direction. And now you can go ahead and strip and pin these and hook them all up together into your fuse area. Before you connect your jumpers, you want to make sure of where you're connecting to. So what I like to do is take it, make sure my fuses are on the left hand side and I can count them one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'll go from left to right, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this one here should attach to number one, this one should attach to number two, and so on and so on. So this is number one, number one. Flip it over, make sure. And that's exactly what that is. And now it is complete. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully I didn't bore you too much. If you like this video, Give this video a thumbs up and please hit that subscribe button for more great content. Thanks for watching. I just want to give a big shout out to my cousin Judson. It's his birthday. Hopefully you like your birthday present. Uh, I did use a little bit of old wire. That's all right. I hope you like it. Happy birthday.